Okay, cool, right. So this video is really just gonna be a fairly simple video of me going over how to make a custom teardown player model. Uh, after that, I'm gonna get back to editing my video, you gotta trust me on that. Uh, but this video is gonna be on Evan's channel because... Yeah, <laughs> this video is going to be basically going over everything as more of a visual thing in case you either don't want to read through all this or maybe having a hard time understanding something you want to check just to make sure you're doing it right. Biosoto. There's two methods you can do. You can do Merlin based, which I personally recommend, or you can use one of the internal characters. To do Merlin based, you're first going to have to go into Teradon and make sure you have Teradon running. Go to play, mod manager. You want to find Merlin and you want to make a local copy. Then what you want to do is go to your file explorer, go to documents, Teradon, mods, and find the Merlin copy. You open this folder. This is your root folder. You want to delete main XML. That's a level. We don't want that. You can also get a respawn that text. Go into Merlin and get rid of brush, data, scripts, and vox. Now, if you go to Merlin again, you see this is preview.png. Now, the difference between this one and this one is that this preview.png is the in-game icon, while this one in the main directory is the mod icon. Here you see the model.vox, which is the actual model itself, and prefab.xml. And that's only set up for files for Merlin. That was also another way to do this, and that's using the internal character. Now, the internal characters are any of these characters. So, first we want to do is go into documents, go to teardown, mods, you want to create a folder and call it whatever. So, I'll be calling it, like, ignore this cool thanks. Now, here's where the stuff you actually want. First, you want to make a text document called info.text, character.text, and finally, the actual folder which stuff is going to go in. So, this is going to be models. I'm just going to call that models for now. That's what you're going to need is a preview.png. This can be any image. All it is really just a workshop icon. So, if I go to my workshop thing, for example, you see I have that icon. That is a preview.png. For this example, I'm just going to use, I don't know the list. We're going to use this. This is going to be preview.png. JPEG. Character.txt. Where you're going to want to put in this. Paste this in. The name is obviously, you know, the name of your character. And that is a name that will show up in game. Now, this is the path to the preview.jpg. Now, you can put the preview.jpg anywhere, technically. So, for example, I'll just use this. So, I can call it like orgor.jpg. Models. So, I'm going to do models. Forward slash. It's where the image is. So, I just do borgor.jpg. If our text is very easy, all you have to do is copy this and paste it here. Name is the name of the mod. The author. Alcaraz. Alex, that's me. In description, ignore this. Well, cool, thanks. That's it. <laughs> that's it for that text. And all it controls is the information within the mod manager. Now, the XML is a little more complex. That's where we actually really have to get the files. So now we need to get to the teardown directory. There's two ways to do that. Uh, you can go to a library, go to your game, right-click it, manage, and browse local files. I personally have it memorized, so you can also manually get there by going home. You can go to your Windows, Program Files, 86, Steam, Steam Apps, and Common, and then finally tear down from here you want to go to data and you want to find prefab and finally player now these are all different characters in game and these are the xml's for them so if you go here you can see you know risa billy bones jones dina campbell etc so let's say for example for this i want to use uh you know unused christy branch for that i will go here a to christy branch xml control c to copy it go back to my models and paste that here what we want to do is open the xml you're gonna see a lot of stuff here all you want to do is first at the top you see something that's group name instant. This is the path normally to the player, but that's not the path for the mod. Let's say, for example, I have, you know, I have my XML in here, like XML. If I open this, that's not going to be there. So what you want to do is replace it. First, you want to do mod. Then here, our folder was in models. So we're going to set it to models. And then we're going to go to XML. XML forward slash. Now, I didn't rename this. If I did, um, then I would replace here. it here for this XML. Now, if we go back to character.txt, this is the part where the XML actually comes into play. You essentially want to copy this path that we had already. So it's models, XML, player.chrissybranch.xml. So we're going to paste that here. The animation speed and height is uh, are just those. They control the speed of the animation in game as well as the height of a character. I would recommend leaving these as is, especially for an original character, because sometimes they can break stuff. So just don't touch that. Now you can do control S and that's done. And finally, the last thing for sign up the internal characters, you want to go back to your teardown directory, which you should hopefully open. Then we'll just go back here. Data, Vox, player. And then you can pick the Vox. For me, that's going to be player uh, underscore Chris C branch dot vox and I will paste that here. Open the XML. Find the first instance of the vox. So you want to look through. Here it is. Vox. You do the same thing here, but except this time you want to do Control H because there's multiple instances of this. So what you want to do is do mod forward slash and then you just put in the directory of your vox. So I just have it in models, so I'm just going to do models forward slash player underscore Chris C branch. Replace all is going to replace all the instances. And finally, Control S once again. Now what you can do is then go to your characters and check so we can see it works. Yeah 
have the little icon of coach, LS mod ignore, just some mod shenanigans. You can see it's the regular Chris C branch model. Go to mod manager, ignore those cool thanks, ignore those cool thanks. Same thing. So now it's set up. Yippee, congrats. Great job, you got through the hard part. Now we can get to the fun part, the modeling. Now for this, I'm not really going to be going too in depth because this is more so a software magic of Oxo. I will go over some of the basics, but essentially all you need to know is first we open up. This is a project. It's going to open like this. What you want to do is open this. Go to, again, documents, tear down, mods. For us, it's going to be, ignore this cool thanks, models, Chris C branch. And now we have Chris C branch. It's the same thing with a, if you did the Merlin method as well, which is a lot easier. Open, mod, Merlin, copy three, Merlin, Merlin, Vox, and it's Merlin. Now this is a palette, and essentially each of these rows represents different materials. Really, all you need to worry about is the color in terms of player models. And what you can do is select part of the palette, color, and change the color. Next to the palette is the window. This is obviously you know, where you see the model. And then to the right shows the project. And now if you want to edit part of the model, you have to find a box, like for example, the head, double click it. And now you can see there's different things. Now it's going to be that, that default. I would recommend clicking that, this little icon, because that like, gives you a different type of mouse. So right now it's erase. I can erase. want to attach. want to paint. I can select this color and just paint it all that. Same thing, you double click away. If you want to change the size of it, there's these three numbers and each one represents different values. X, Y, and Z axis. But essentially, if you want to change part of it, then you can just do, do you know, nine, for example, and it'd be a little taller. Control Z to undo it. And then Control S to save the model. Now, if you want to add another accessory, like for example, I have this box and I want to add... Same model over here. The way you do that is you do new. You're going to have this new massive box. It's going to be a lot. Just double click it. You may have to find the edges. It's a little weird. And you can just change the scale to what you want. So let's say I want it to be one wide, two long, and five tall. You can then again double click away from it. So double click that. And you can move this to wherever you want it to be. So let's say I want it to be like right here. If you want, you can technically do this if you really want to. Reason because you're not going to be doing the rigging in here. You're going to be doing rigging and teardown. How? Uh, I'll explain that in a second. So let's just do, you know, control us. We save that. As in project, you actually want to select outline and this actually shows you all this stuff. You can right click that and give it a name like a book or whatever. Control us. It's saved. We can close the magic box. And same thing with this model if you want to do that. Now, if you didn't add any new accessories to the model, I think then now you're basically done. You can just publish it to the workshop, finding the mod, and just do publish. And you can go through that process and you're good to go. But if you did want to add accessories, like for example, what I did, first go back to the File Explorer. I know Scary just hopefully one of the last things we need to do. I'm going to go to models and you want to find your XML. Bring that to your root directory. So if I go to mods, I have cool, ignore those cool thanks, open that, you copy the XML here. The reason is because if you go and play, go to mod editor, you can go to file, open, and you see all the stuff here. If you do a cool, ignore this thing. This is the only folder you can open. You can only open the directory of any file. You just double click that, open this, you have the .xml. This is the teardown model editor. This is the scene explorer. It shows everything that's in it. It's more apparent for maps and stuff, but for our purposes, it's really just showing like what limbs are where. We have to worry about that. These are properties. They're not super important for parts of the model itself. They're more so for things like the hinges. It's just unbreakable, no call bone, so it doesn't, the game doesn't de-render it at all. So if you have any attachments, I would recommend just putting this tag attachment unbreakable no call proxy shape. everything i'm saying will be in the description to just copy and paste now this is the model itself all these colors and everything these are all different bones so these purple spheres and prisms uh, are essentially the main rigs bones they're essentially tear down base bones as is so you don't really want to mess with those because then it kind of breaks your player model you can modify and move it around if you want i haven't really done that i haven't really had a need to do that but if you do want to experiment with it you can just remember it may break a lot of things but let's say you have a model that you want to add for example, what if I wanted, you know, another knife or something? What you need to do is first get a hinge somewhere. Do you want to find a part you're connecting to? Since so I want to connect a hinge to here or something on back or whatever, what I do is find this VOC, right click it, go down to new, now I would find joint. Now, these are the main properties. The name isn't really important. You can just do like pack pack thingy or whatever. It doesn't really matter. For tags, you want to set it to attachment because it's an attachment. Now, for size, usually I do 0.05, which is also the default size of these things. If you need to snap it to a smaller amount you go to windows snap and set to 0.5 the type is obviously the type of a joint so i can do a ball joint which means that the object will fling around pretty much anywhere i can do a hinge so that it will only move in this 
rigid direction. Sort of like a fan or something, which is why these things only go up and down like that. You can also set it to a cone as well. A little more complex. It's basically a ball joint, but a little more constrained, if that makes sense. And finally, prismatic. Not entirely sure what this one is. I haven't really messed around with it. I'm not entirely sure how it, what it does. Now, rotating shrink descent is essentially the friction of the object. So if I want there to be some friction, so it's not constantly flinging around, I could do like 0, 0.0. The defaults are up. Well, they're very small, but you can you can just use the defaults, which is 0 0.00025. The rotation spring is just that. It's a spring which put, brings the object back to the original spot it was in, so it doesn't just go to one side and stay now, there. You can also hold shift to rotate it. I'm going to do that because I want the object to be able to move here. I'm going to bring the snap down to 0 0.25, so I can just put it in between. And for this, I'm going to set it to 90 and 180. Uh oh, oops. 0 and 180. 90 and 270. So I'll just fling you uh, move around here. Then what you do, right click. Now to actually add the accessory, you want to go to new, Vox. Then from here, you want to go to file, go to mod. And this will probably seem familiar because this is your directory from earlier. So you go to models. We're going to do Christy branch dot Vox. Now next, we're going to want to go object. This is all the names of everything apart. Let's say I wanted, you know, second cleaver or whatever. I have the cleaver. For scale, you want to set it to 0.5 to make it so it's actually, you know, the proper Vox scale. You can then move it into the spot you want it at. Also, another side note that you should probably know. Part of the Vox, hat, part of the mono does have to be making actual contact with the hinge. Again, you also want to make sure you apply this, which again will be in the description. It's the attachment unbreakable no call proxy, no proxy um, shape. That just makes it so uh, it'll actually be, you know, be connected and will properly be a prop. If you don't put that, it might not appear and it can be annoying. You also want to set it to prop so that it does properly, you know, follow the laws of physics and stuff. So, for example, I can't, I can't have the object be like this because otherwise, if I do Control S to save, Control Q to go back here, and then to test it. Again, you gotta go here, Control C, into your directory, find your XML, models, paste it here, and again, everything hot loads. So I can go characters, check it, it fell off. Why? This is a common issue that happens sometimes, and usually it's because the hinge isn't properly connected to either the, the main bone you're trying to connect it to, which in this case would be the torso, or the prop itself, which would be the knife. Now, if you go back and forth, you can see it falls, and that can be helpful to try and see maybe where it is, but for the most part, there's much you can do there. You want to go back to the editor, open the sauna spam in your group chat, kindly shut the fuck. Now, if I look at the bone, you can see that, wait a second, it's not probably connected to the torso. No! What gives? So we just move it up so that prop is fully within it. We did it! It's... <laughs> it's freaking out, but I did it. But ignoring the spinning, it's working. Now that we've gone on done, we can make sure everything's saved. And, uh, it's Also, everything I went through was adding attachment bones and everything is the exact same as if you use the Merlin method. But I just use the other method just to show it. Finally, once you have the model and, you know, it's working, except for the propeller and it's back. You can then go to your mod manager, find your mod, and just go to publish, and then publish. Now, there is one more important thing to remember. And that is that once you put in the title, you know, it's all cool. You might put, you know, I put a lot of stuff. Like, if I go here, I have a fuck ton of things, whatever. Now, let's say I go to Teradon and I want to update, you know, Know, the Ander Corvin mod. What you'll notice is that once an update is published onto the workshop, it will overwrite your description. If you want to keep your description, um, before you post publish any update, I'd recommend copying your entire description, everything in here, including like, like format and stuff, and open a notepad and just paste it there or something. That's, <laughs> that's very much it. Congrats. If you did it and you got through it, Congrats. Modding is not easy. It can be chaotic, it can be annoying, it can get confusing, yeah, and it requires a lot of patience, but you did it. Congrats. Good on you. You should be proud. Great job. Again, this video is best to be paired with the guide if you really want to, and that's because the guide is a lot more in-depth. This video was a little scuffed. I didn't entirely remember everything, so I'm also going to be editing to try and clean up. Hopefully, it still work well. Hopefully, that helped you guys, and we will hopefully start seeing a lot more workshop submissions because I really... That's the reason I made this guy. I want to see other Teradon Workshop things. Okay, cool. Bye.